So I have hundreds and thousands of dollars of woodworking equipment in my wood shop, and this machine right here is by far my favorite and the most unique machine that I own, and I think not a lot of people know about it. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over what this machine is, what it does, its drawbacks, and how I use it in my day-to-day -day wood shop. So what exactly is this machine called? Well, the machine name is the Lark 260 Profile Sander, and I think that's a horrible marketed name. So in my shop, we just call it our flap sander. Why? Because of these little flaps right here. So about three years ago, I purchased this machine. I think it was five to $6,000 in total. The reason I purchased it, we're a very sanding heavy shop. We have a lot of material we sand. If you're a wood shop owner, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're constantly sanding. I had so much sanding time. I was trying to find any machine that, that can help me. All that was out there was these really, really expensive hundreds and thousands of dollars machines, $50,000. And then I came across this machine right here. And so uh, I talked to the owner, Larry Larrick, super cool guy, shout out to you, Larry. He told me about his capabilities, I ended up getting it. And probably to this date, I mean, we've had to have saved 20,000 hours of sanding because of this machine right here. So it easily paid for its cost within pretty much the first three months. So how does this machine work? Well, it's relatively simple. As you can see, you have these bristles and you have a piece of sandpaper and this thing spins really fast, the sandpaper hits your material, these bristles behind it give that sandpaper some stability, so whenever that material hits, it has a little bit of bounce back to it, right? What's really cool about all this is that I can customize all of these different sandpaper, the bristles behind it, I can put different grits in here, I can change this up and do three different grit patterns on this whole roll, and as you can tell on mine specifically, I have two different patterns cut in this sandpaper. I have this wide pattern, and this thin pattern right here. And that's why I love this thing so much because it's really easy to understand, really easy to use, and there's a lot of customization options you can do with the grit and the backing behind it. Now, as much as I love this sander, this is not an end-all, be-all sander. We still have to do a lot of sanding work on particular stuff. This right here, where we have like epoxy filling, you're not gonna put 80 grit on it and really like hog down on stuff because it's gonna round the edges, but it will get all the little nitpicky stuff that you don't wanna do and it will save a ton of time, but it won't get this thick stuff or get these super rough edges that have tear out and whatnot. So aside from this machine not having that capability, replacing all this sandpaper is not cheap. I'm not gonna disclose the price because of fairness to my supplier and stuff like that. There may be multiple suppliers out there and I'm not gonna give away that cost, but it is pretty pricey. Granted, we only have to do it once or twice a year, but they're definitely worth the cost of how much time it's gonna save you. So a couple of the little features on this machine, it does have dust collection, so it has a four inch dust port in the back. You have this handle right here where you can crank it up and down. You have start, stop, forward and reverse. So this thing will spin both directions. And then down here, you have your RPM control. There is some cases where I actually slow it down depending on what we're doing or I'll speed it up a lot. So primarily in my shop, we use this sander right here for four different reasons. Reason number one, these hard curved surfaces, if you're sanding and you have a random orbital sander right it's really hard to get this routered edge or you have to you know use a hand sand or you know just a piece of sandpaper on your finger with this flap sander you take this you take it on the edge you do right there you do right there and you hit that curved surface and boom this whole thing is already smooth you want to hit this other edge boom boom you're hitting this edge hitting both sides this thing's sanded it's done. And so when we're making legs for different things or little tiny pieces like this with a lot of curves, it is absolutely fabulous. The next thing we use it for in the shop is when we have to cut a whole bunch of pickets and everybody knows that that little burr that's right here, and I know there's different ways to get that burr off, but if you're making Adirondack furniture or something with a whole bunch of pickets, you typically have to like get these off because the customer don't want a splinter in their butt, right? <laughs> or anywhere, right, or in their hand. What I do with this, I have a team of my guys, we literally grab a picket out of a bucket and we'll go and just rotate it really quick. Just like this on this sander. The edges are nice and rounded now. The corners aren't sharp, and so nobody's getting hurt. You know, you're not poking yourself later. And I just did that in like three seconds. Now moving on. So we have a lot of CNC-based products in our shop, and a lot of times we have an onion skin on these edges right here. So this right here is an onion skin. I either call it an onion skin or an eggshell. Why? Because it's really about as thin as an onion. So what we do in our shop, we take that onion skin that's wrapped around a lot of these boards that we're not gonna have a good routed edge on, and we'll take it, and we'll just, Get it right off.
No more onion skin. That edge is nice and smooth. It's not gonna cut anybody. I can go over it as fast as I want and I have all my employees do this as well with any of our products. They better be able to run their finger over any corner as fast as you possibly can without getting a splinter. I'm fast as boy. Now, I don't make them literally do that because, <laughs> um, you know, um, that wouldn't be good for my guys, but that's one of our checks that we do in our shop. The last thing that uh, we use it for is irregularly shaped stuff or really hard to sand things. So right here is like this wooden maze game, right? You put a marble in there, but as you can see, there's this tiny little slivers of wood everywhere, right? Because wood's fibrous and it's impossible, trust me, impossible to sand this thing efficiently. But with the flap sander, it's gonna get all of this inside and get this edge where you can't cut your finger on it once again. Because if I go like this on this edge, <laughs> ow, <laughs> I'm gonna get a splinter. I just do a couple little quick motions of doing this. And this thing, it's already smooth as a baby's bottom. If you can look, all those little burrs are gone. Uh, you know, there may be a, a little stick in there we gotta get out. I mean, I can do this all the way around now. like. We're good. There's nothing that's gonna cut me on here. So as you can see, this machine saves me a ton of time and I highly, highly recommend it. Now, you can come back and say, I can't afford this giant machine right here. It's too expensive. You know, I'm working out of my garage. I know of a couple other companies that have this type of machine, but in like a bench top model, right? I think Grizzly has one. I'll leave the link in the description. There's also some stuff called a mop sander that you can put on a drill press. And it also kind of spins and, and has a lot of these flaps on there. So there is alternatives. If you are that hobbyist or that DIY or that weekend warrior and you can't afford something like this, I would definitely go that route because even if you only get a section this big and it spins, the amount of time it's gonna save you on sanding and getting those little nooks and crannies that you can't really get or it's a pain in the butt to get with your sander. So whether you're a hobbyist and get those smaller versions like the Grizzly or that mop sander that fits on the drill press or you're more of the industrial professional side and you want something like this, I highly recommend it. Once again, Larry Lark did not sponsor this video, but one company that did not sponsor the video because I own the company is Frio. I made a wooden cooler or I made a cooler look like wood. It's not actually wooden cooler. All the girls in the office absolutely hate this bag, but but I love it because it looks like wood and it's cool and it holds a six pack of beer or your lunch or a six pack of beer and your lunch. And it has a bottle opener on the side that we actually laser engrave in our shop too. So really cool product. Um, check that out on FrioCoolers.com. And that's all I really got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Leave comments in the comment section below. And we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. So whether you watch this video in 2023 or in 2024, do not forget to subscribe guys. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.